Almost everyone has picked up a Rubik's Cube. Some of us have had enough practice to fully complete the Rubik's Cube, feeling that rush of solving such a complex puzzle. For the rest of us, it just brings a feeling of frustration and disappointment. But what if I told you that according to MIT researchers, 20 rotational moves were all that is needed to solve any combination from a Rubik's Cube. This is what is known as God's number. But most speed cubers, those who solve for time, are making about 60 rotational moves. So where does this number come from? And how can you figure out how to solve a Rubik's Cube in 20 moves? Let's really understand the immense difficulty. A high level of analysis and movement skills is required to complete a Rubik's Cube, especially considering that the Rubik's Cube has 43 quintillion different performable combinations. And understanding where this number comes from is a crucial step before understanding God's number. The number 43 quintillion represents the number of possible scrambles in a Rubik's Cube. But instead of scrambles, think of that number as 43 quintillion permutations and combinations, meaning the number of ways the colors can be combined and permuted. So let's look at the cube itself. There are 12 edges and those positions can be occupied by any of the edge colors. So mathematically, there are 12 factorial ways in which the edges can be combined and permuted, or in simple words, arranged. By applying the same idea with the corners, we find out that there are 8 factorial combinations and permutations for how the corner can be arranged. By pure logic, one would say that there are 12 factorial times 8 factorial different possible scrambles for the Rubik's Cube. But that's not how it works. We have talked about how each edge can be arranged in 12 different spots, but what we haven't discussed is that they can also be flipped. Each edge can be flipped no matter which position it is in. So after further calculations, we find out that there are 2 to the power of 12 different combinations for the edges to be arranged, when flipped and not flipped. Doing the same for the corners, there are 3 to the power of 8 different combinations for these to be rotated and twisted, as there are 3 sides and 8 spots. So multiplying everything together, we arrive at a grand total of 519 quintillion. Now that's way off. But that's because there are some exceptions. First of all, it is impossible to have one and only one corner twisted while everything else is solved. I mean, you just can't solve the cube itself. The same thing applies for the edges. You can't just have one flipped edge. Again, it's not a possible case. There are no algorithms to solve the cube. And lastly, you cannot just have two pieces swapped, whether it is two edges, two corners, or either. There's just no possible PLL permutation. For example, three pieces would work for a T permutation. So let's do the math. For the last edge or corner pieces, they have to be flipped and twisted just the right way for the cube to be solved. And so, realistically, there should be one way these last pieces can be permuted not 3 or 2. However, there also must be at least 2 corners flipped, otherwise the cube cannot be solved. With just one corner twisted, it is impossible to solve the cube. So, after some computation, we arrive at 43 quintillion different arrangements for the Rubik's Cube. Yes, I'll repeat that. 43 quintillion. That is more than 5.5 times the amount of grains of sand in the world. In fact, each time you turn a Rubik's Cube, you are likely to have created a completely new combination. This provides some perspective on why this puzzle is so hard to complete for first time puzzlers. But it does fabricate another question. How are people able to finish these puzzles so quickly? The answer lies in algorithms. Algorithms are sets of moves that will bring out the expected and most optimal result. They are mathematically the best way of finishing a task and can be combined to become more efficient. These algorithms can be learned by anyone, but the best puzzlers have to memorize hundreds in order to solve the Rubik's Cube. As for me, I've memorized 80 algorithms just to solve the last layer of the Rubik's Cube, and thus my average times have increased significantly. This method is seemingly more effective as it takes away more from the guesswork, resulting in less delay and quicker times just like the world record of 3.47 seconds. So, mathematical proving done. On to some real talk. God's number is the minimum number of rotations to complete any given scramble of a Rubik's Cube. Any of those 43 quintillion scrambles we just proved.
but there is a reason why it is labeled God's number, as it would require God-like analysis and algorithms to perform. The number 20 also only covers 0.00001% of scrambles, which means that most can be performed under 20 moves. This was tested by computer scientists who performed millions of simulations in order to find the minimum amount of moves. It was estimated to be at least 30 not long ago, but that estimation has started to reduce as time goes on. So why can't people do it? Why can't we solve it under 20 moves? Unfortunately, people are not computers, and being able to analyze every single factor of a Rubik's Cube is an impossible task. The world record for the least amount of moves sits at 20, which does touch God's number but still falls short of computers. So even though the maximum moves to solve any scramble on a Rubik's Cube is at most 20 movements, it is unlikely that any of us will be achieving that level of analysis and solving skills. But with enough practice, anything is possible.